families, by breaking up those families, by offering welfare checks to women to keep having babies, no more father needed, he's out doing something, the government's the father, they destroy the family. We're not supposed to analyze that. We're not supposed to talk about that. We're supposed to talk about their good intentions. They destroy people's futures. Future is not big government, self-serving politicians, powerful bureaucrats. This has been tried, tested throughout history. The result has always been disaster. President Obama, your agenda is not new, it's not change, and it's not hope. <laughs> Spending Spending a nation into generational debt is not an act of compassion. All politicians, including President Obama, are temporary stewards of this nation. It is not their task to remake the founding of this country. It is not their task to tear it apart and rebuild it in their image. We have. It is not their task, it is not their right to remake this nation to accommodate their psychology. I sometimes wonder if liberalism is not just a psychosis or a psychology, not an ideology. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's so much about feelings and the predominant feeling liberalism is about is feeling good about themselves and they do that by telling themselves they have all this compassion. You know how to really, if you really want to unhinge a liberal, it's hard to do because they're so unhinged now anyway, <laughs> even after they, but all you have to do is say, you know what, the things you people do, the things you people believe in are cruel. That's the last way they look at themselves. They are, they are the best people on earth. They're the good people. <laughs> you tell them that their ideas and that their policies are cruel and the eggs start scrambling and just, it's fun to, I have learned how to tweak liberals everywhere. I can do it instinctively now. I tweak them in the media, tweak them in the, there's no reason to be afraid of these people, but why in the world would you be afraid of the deranged? You know, there's, there really is no reason to be afraid of them. And there's no reason to assume they're the minority and there's no reason to let them set all the premises and the agendas to which we respond to. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but everybody asks me, and I'm sure it's been a focal point of your convention, well, what do we do as conservatives? What do we do? How do we overcome this? Well, the one thing, and there are many, but one thing that we can all do is stop assuming that the way to beat them is with better policy ideas right now. I talked, I don't want to name any names, it's not the point, but I, t I talked to people about the Obama budget, or the Obama porculus bill, or the Obama whatever the hell next, the TARP 2, whatever it's going to be. And they start talking to me in the terms of process and policy. You know, and I say, stop it. We're not, this, what do you mean? Who's setting the process? Who's setting the policy? They are. You want to tweak it? You want to, no, we've, uh, get, this is philosophy, folks. This guy, this guy, I forgot to, this guy in the, in, the, in the focus group after Bobby Jindal said, oh God, I didn't want to hear him talk. He says, Republicans and Democrats, Republicans and Democrats. Ladies and gentlemen of the United States of America, that's exactly what your future is about. Who wins, Republicans or Democrats, conservatives versus liberals. The notion of partisanship, false premise, partisanship, let me define bipartisanship for you first. Bipartisanship is everybody seems to go orgasmic over the concept of bipartisanship. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I checked with Fox, that word's okay. <laughs> Remember.
they covered the, the Lewinsky thing. So this, that's my <laughs> Partisanship occurs only after one other result, and that is victory. In other words, let's say, as conservatives, liberals demand that we be bipartisan with them in Congress. What they mean is, we check our core principles at the door, come in, let them run the show, and then agree with them. That's bipartisanship to them. To us, bipartisanship is them being forced to agree with us after we have politically cleaned their clocks and beaten them. And that has to be what we're focused on. Why? Why would any of us in this room who hold the core beliefs we believe, somebody tell me where is the compromise on all of this spending? Where is the compromise on all this punishment of the achievers? I don't know. Where is... <laughs> Where is the compromise between good and evil? Should Jesus have cut a different deal? <laughs> well, no, seriously, I'm, from a standpoint of what we have to do, folks, this is not about taking a policy or a process that the Democrats have put forward and fighting over it about around the edges. We have, if we're, if we're going to convince the minds and hearts of the American people that what's about to happen to them is as disastrous as anything in their lives in peacetime, we're going to have to discuss philosophy with it. We are going to have to talk about principle because our principles are not present in what's happening here. So where the hell do we go to compromise what we believe in when our principles are not there? Our principles are just the opposite of what is happening. The American people, it's a tough challenge. I, I, admit, I admit it's a tough challenge, but it's worth it. It's worth it. The way I just defined bipartisanship, you could turn it around. That liberals will define bipartisanship when we surrender and say, okay, we give. We're not quitting. We are not giving up. There is countries too important. We, Now, there are certain realities. We don't have the votes in Capitol Hill to stop what's going to happen. What we can do is slow it down. Procedure, parliamentary procedures. Slow it down and do the best we can to inform the American people of what's really on the horizon. I know it's going to be tough. At some point, I don't think it can happen even right now. I mean, this is still a honeymoon period. and. And there's a, there's a lot of uh, devotion to the Obama administration. It has nothing to do with intellect or thinking. Uh, it's, it's feelings. It's, it, it's just going to take some time for this to play out. But I, I spoke to David Keene, uh, interviewing him for my newsletter. I asked him about this. And he said, they're going to overreach. <laughs> Wouldn't you say they have? <laughs> I mean, I, they, they're going to overreach at some point. At some point, people are going to realize none of this is possible. You can't have people living in homes they don't pay for. You can't have people driving cars they don't pay for. I mean, you can for a while, but after a while, the people paying for it are fine. Screw this. We're not putting up with it. And you're going to see, and you're already starting to see evidence of this, all these tea parties that are starting to bubble up out there. Those are great. It's fabulous.